OK, hello, this is Robert University and this is. Um, uh, Adobe Illustrator tutorial number six. How to be a better graphic designer and learn Adobe Illustrator at the same time. Well, this is where we left off last week. Uh, last time we were <clears throat> using shapes and colors uh, to enhance the idea behind our visual design work. And this is the current uh, version of the um, uh, of the image that kind of defines the these videos, which is what I've been kind of working on uh, throughout this series to uh, help to bring out important points that I'm trying to make as well as. Uh, how to teach you to use Adobe Illustrator 2020. So. If I zoom out a bit. Lower left hand corner and hit a percentage, let's say 33. You can see that I've got other things here on my. Uh, artboard or next to my artboard that I wanted to talk about. Last time we were talking about um, how to compose a vibrant and dynamic layouts, etc. And I used this Moulin Rouge example by uh, Henri Toulouse Lautrec as an example. And to sort of lead into um, uh, what we want to cover today, uh, I want to revisit that and especially how these floorboards are working. But first, I want to show you how this um, design for the a logo, an image, whatever you want to call it for these uh, tutorials has evolved. If you've been following these videos, you've seen that uh, first we worked with typography, etc. And uh, uh, it all began with these notes that I had constructed about how maybe to combine images that were appropriate for this series of videos. And the culmination of all this uh, was to try and combine this idea of a um, uh, of a badge of a, a rosette as they call it in England or a uh, um, uh, uh, an award a um, a, uh, um, uh, uh, a blue ribbon as they might call it in America etc to combine this with that tassel kind of thing that hangs off of the hat that students wear when they graduate from university so this was essentially the idea that I wanted to try and incorporate in this uh, series of videos was that these videos were of a certain quality defined by this rosette or um, a blue ribbon, etc., and that it might replace the tassel that hangs off of the hat that people wear when they graduate from illustrate uh, from uh, university. So to sort of combine these two ideas of <clears throat> university level quality, et cetera, um, as far as learning software and learning how to be in essence a graphic designer. So <clears throat> er early attempts to this with this logo proved that uh, actually making an image sort of like this was a bit cumbersome and, and sort of contrived and not that great. So what I ended up doing was stripping down the idea and substituting this rosette idea for the I of the word design. And that was done in quite a simple way of just just making the dot of the I into what was uh, what's normally sh uh, uh, shaped as like a, a badge on a blue ribbon or a rosette. But I still wanted to try and incorporate the idea of that hat, that mortarboard that you wear when you graduate from university. And I was able to do that by creating this background. And this background subtly enhances the idea of the graphic by showing this sort of mortarboard shape with this associated uh, 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 blue ribbon, et cetera. It's not a very obvious kind of solution, but it's back there working in our favor as well. And so this is where this is the current state of of the image that defines these videos. OK, that's fine. Um, and no doubt this will evolve maybe in the next video as well as I look at it and, and think about other ways to improve it. The use of color is obvious. The gold uh, ribbon or uh, the gold rosette, the gold, uh, the, the blue ribbon and the gold uh, star that goes with the blue ribbon, etc dictates what colors I would want to use on a, on a graphic like this. <clears throat> but what I really want to show you is this. I want to go back to this poster because this video is really all about a new thing, something that I'd like you to 
seriously consider when using Adobe Illustrator, and it concerns the idea of perspective. Now, you've all heard that word. This means drawing objects so that um, uh, from a, uh, a uh, in a way that gives a perception of um, 3D space, but in uh, a natural alignment so that 3D objects rendered in 2D uh, um, um, software packages like Adobe Illustrator indicate uh, three dimensions. And in order to do that, we must consider the idea of perspective. Now, perspective is a pretty cool thing. And uh, I learned this quite early on in my career. It's always been a, a really big help. So even when doing sketches in a notebook or anything like that, a, a knowledge of how perspective works is, is really quite important and something that you should seriously consider trying to get uh, used to and, and master. Now, here's a perfect example in this Toulouse-Lautrec poster of, of one point perspective, all right? If you can see how Toulouse-Lautrec has defined the floorboards of the Moulin Rouge here, and the way he's constructed them moves your eyes directly into the center where the premier dancer of the day, La Galou, is dancing, and uh, that's a really good visual sort of uh, uh, approach to help the eye move into the important part of the poster, etc. Now, if you follow all of these lines to where they intersect somewhere way off the page, they would all they would all intersect in a single point, and that's what's known as a uh, single point perspective, and Le Lautrec uses that really effectively in this poster. But what I want to teach you today is how to use a uh, two point perspective within the Adobe Illustrator interface within the program. That's That means that instead of having one vanishing point where all these lines meet somewhere off stage, we're going to use a system of two vanishing points. And with those two vanishing points, uh, if we define them properly and adhere to their to their <clears throat> to the restrictions that they um, uh, give us, we can make sure to do certain things such as environments or in this case, perhaps a cityscape, et cetera, so that every building that we might construct within a certain visual area all is all visually related to each other and 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 consistently appears as if they all belong together and that's what perspective really gives you is this sense of unity this sense of of um uh, that everything works together in a non-distracting way okay so that's the intro so let's just get down and do it now so to do this what i'm going to do is is show you i've prepared some things earlier and what i want to do is show you how to construct these things that i've prepared earlier and how to grasp the basic ideas of two-point perspective that is perspective that has two vanishing points so to do this i'm going to start, open a new illustrator file so i'm going to hit file and new and with my options i'm going to make sure that uh, landscape is clicked because i, I want to uh, uh, an a um, an a4 document that's longer than it is high for this purpose and i'm just going to click ok and i get this blank page i'm going to zoom out a bit so if we come down here to the lower left hand corner we hit maybe 50 percent we see that we can do that all right so i'm going to start from scratch now a lot of this we've done before but this this can be seen as kind of a review of things that we've done before and um uh, it might be quite useful so as in any document we want to uh, structure our document with guidelines, guides as they call them in Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to set up a basic format on a very raw A4 uh, landscape format so that I can show you how two-point perspective works. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into this upper left-hand corner and I'm going to come up here to view, yes, and come down to rulers and click show rulers. Now show my rulers automatically show up with the zero point in the upper left hand corner of this document you can see zeros up here zeros over here okay if you want to change the um, um, the increments of your rulers or if you want to change the color of your guidelines remember you can do all that by hitting edit and coming down to preferences and clicking on in this case guides and grid etc or units if you want to change the 
uh, how your rulers are calibrated, but millimeters are fine for me and I've already changed my guidelines into this nice dark blue, which I can see easily as uh, opposed to the sort of cyan blue that comes up by default. So that's where you change things if you want to. All right, so I'm going to zoom into this corner and I'm going to grab some guidelines from the rulers and that can be done by left clicking on in this instance, the top uh, ruler, uh, left clicking and dragging a guideline down to the top of my page and, and it should stick there. Yes. OK, and I'll drag one from the left as well and stick it on the left hand border of my A4. OK, that's close enough. So now I'm going to go to the zoom tool and instead I'm going to use the hand tool, the fly out hand tool and I'm going to move my document. Uh, I want the lower right hand corner. You can see that it's quite big. I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, moving, moving. Where's the lower right hand corner? This isn't working. I'm going to go to fit on screen. Right and zo just zoom in down here. On my lower left hand corner. Much better way to do it. Remember, if you lose your way in the Illustrator interface, just go down to the lower left and hit fit on screen in that drop down box. OK, so what I want is my bottom right hand corner. Nice and big. I'm going to drag two guidelines to the bottom right hand corner. Yes. OK. Want to stick. OK, close enough. And from the right. From the left, I'm going to define the right hand side of my page. And in the lower left, I'm going to come down to my full screen, hit fit on the screen. Here we go. So, quite simple. I've got four dark blue guidelines I can see uh, surrounding my page. Now, the thing is, is that uh, an A4 document is 210 millimeters long. Yes? Or on the short side, so that makes it easy to divide it in half. That means 105 millimeters should split that that A4 document exactly in half. But you can see that in my increments over here, I, I would have to sort of fudge 105 down here. So what I want to do is is zoom in a little bit closer, so that 105 actually appears. I'm going to drag down another guideline and place it right on the 105 marker. I'm going to go back to my fit on the screen. So now I've got my page split exactly top to bottom 105 uh, millimeters. It's split equally. Now the um, <clears throat> the long side of an A4 document is uh, somewhere in the 298 range, uh, 297, 298, something like that. It's a hard one to split uh, in half uh, mathematically. So I'm going to show you how to split a page in half using um, a, a very a practical method. To do this first, I want to go down here to my lower left, and you can see that we've got our fill box and our outline box both set on the null set. Yes, none, nothing, no color. So I want to bring my stroke or outline color box to the foreground, and I want to get rid of this very useless color guide that we've got here and I want to open um, um, my swatch box so that I can get some nice easy solid colors. So I've got my stroke box to the, uh, in the forefront. I've got my colors at the ready. I'm going to use the, re the rectangle tool and draw just a box. Okay and I'm going to select black as the outline color. Right, and you can see it appears down here. So if I hit Control C, or if you're using a Mac, Command C, and if I hit Control or if you're using a Mac, Command F, we get a second box placed directly on top of the original one. And using the arrow keys, I move to the sides. So they're perfectly aligned, and I leave a tiny little gap between them. Okay. Now I select both, move them over so they stick to the left-hand margin, stretch them to the right hand margin and then now since both of those boxes are perfectly equal if I zoom in and place a guideline right between them I know that I'm pretty close to having this page split directly in half. OK. 
Okay, we covered that, I think, the first session. Just a reminder. That's how it all works. Click my select tool, get rid of these boxes that don't need. Them. So let's zoom out now. What I want to do now is establish um, my vanishing points. And I think I'll need a little extra room, maybe about there. OK, now I want these vanishing points to be the exact distance uh, away from um, the center point of my page. I want them to be perfectly accurate if I can. And so to do that, what I want to do is grab this upper left hand corner that uh, of where my rulers inter intersect and reset the calibration of my rulers by dragging, left clicking and dragging that upper left hand corner directly into the center of my page until it sticks. Yes. Now, if you can see now, zero is set exactly on that guideline where I dragged my my crosshairs to. I want to set my vanishing points out at 300 millimeters away from the center point. So you can see 300 millimeters appears on both sides of my screen. So I'm going to draw drag uh, a guideline out from the left, put it uh, 300 millimeters left and one 300 millimeters right. And where these two intersect right here, these are going to be my vanishing points. Now, um, what I want to do now is, um, uh, uh, it, uh, if I were you and I was working on this right now, I would save it at this point. Now, the thing about guides is this. Right now, I've got them, got them set so that they can be moved about. I just want to show you this uh, just for your own uh, knowledge, okay, guides. If I was quite happy with where all these guides were, I didn't want them to move up as I was creating some artwork. I come over here and I lock the guides, okay? That allows me to continue to move them, etc. cetera. Um, if I uh, don't have lock guides clicked, I can continue to move my, um, my guidelines uh, in any way that uh, suits me. But the thing is, if you're actually working on creating artwork and you're marqueeing around uh, vector images, sometimes you'll pick up these guidelines as well. So, and move them inadvertently. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, if you um, if you're happy with all your guidelines, click lock guides. If you want to be able to continue to manipulate them, like I'm going to do now, uh, don't lock your guides. Okay. So, what are you talking about, Rob? How are you going to make? What's this vanishing point stuff all about? What's this two? Uh, uh, two point perspective all about. Well, I'll show you. The thing is, if we were to create like a cityscape in the middle of this document, what we need to do is make sure that everything aligns with these two vanishing points left and right. And how do we keep track of that? <clears throat> well, what we do is we continue to use guidelines. So if I, with my select tool, click on this guideline and hit control C and control V, I get a guideline that appears in the middle of the screen. You can see it here. Well, what I want to do is I'm going to move that guideline over. Now, you see, if you look carefully, you can see that a little tiny X appears. It's right uh, in the middle of my white hand, uh, my white uh, uh, artboard right now. And you can see it as it moves, yes? Guideline. And when I get it exactly, into that intersection of these two guidelines, I let go, all right? And I click on what's what, what, this tool over here called the rotate tool, yeah? And you can see that this little tiny, tiny little center point of my new guideline has appeared directly on the crosshairs of my uh, left-hand vanishing point. Now, if I grab this new guideline, with my rotate tool and move it, look what happens. It moves perfectly into the center of my screen and its center point is notched onto, uh, it is located right at my left hand vanishing point. Let's do that again. I'm going to select this guide. I'm going to hit Control C, hit Control V. Make sure I've got the right guide. With the select tool, I'm going to move it over and try and align that center point that kind of elusively shows up. You can see a little black X moving along the center line of, of uh, my artboard. 
Yeah, you can just barely see it. I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen, but I'm going to let it go. <clears throat> and that didn't appear to have done what I wanted to. So I'm going to try it again and move it over. Yes. And try and align that with my left hand vanishing point. Move it over a bit. Hit the rotate tool and rotate. And wow, look at that. What in the heck happened there? Let's go back. OK. All right, these things. Happen. OK, so I do have a, uh, a second vanishing. I do have a second guide over there. I'm going to move it over until it aligns. With my vanishing point. Oh, you see what I've done? I've somehow managed to get two guides, and that's my problem. So let's get rid of that one. Hey, these things happen. All right, let's move this guide over. I'm trying to align that little X center point with my vanishing point. Then I'm going to take my rotate tool and rotate it. I want it to be down here, and there we go. Yes, you can see the center point is right on my left hand uh, uh, vanishing point. And now I've got these two lines. OK, now let's do this for the right hand vanishing point as well. Now I've got one that I've created earlier that I'm going to show you in a second, but this is how you create these kinds of things. What I've just done now is selected the right hand guide, control or command C, control or command V. Move this over. So the center point aligns with my vanishing point on the right which looks quite good rotate tool yes okay i've got good alignment on my right hand vanishing point what i want this to do is be exactly aligned with the center guideline that i've created in my page yes and that's perfect do you see okay now once more Control C, Control V. I'm with my right hand vanishing point. I can see it just barely. There it is. Let go. Rotate tool. Now I'm trying to align with my. Oh, look at that. First time. Perfect. OK. So now you can see that all of our lines begin at either the right, all of our guidelines in the center here, begin either at a right vanishing point or our left vanishing point. Now check this out. Let's just say I want to make a short squat, squat city building in the middle of my, uh, what's to be a complex landscape in two dimensions in Adobe Illustrator. What I do now is I bring another guideline over and let's just say I, I want it to be 100 millimeters wide, so I put a, I put a guideline at 50 on either side of my zero calibration. Look, OK, there we go. So what do we do now? OK, check this out. First of all, we go to uh, view and um, not view to window. And what we're looking for is swatch libraries. And as we always use, we use color books and Pantone solid coded. And we get that template up and out. And I'm going to find. I want to kind of find some blues or something. Yeah, let's use some. Let's use some greens. OK, now check this out. If you have in your uh, window, in your view window, if you have smart guides ticked, this operation becomes much simpler, OK? And Smart Guys is ticked. So what I want to do now is I want to take my pen tool, and this is the regular old pen tool, not the curvature tool, which is a different animal completely. Take your regular pen tool, and what will happen is if I left click anywhere close to where guidelines intersect, my um, node of my new vector curve will snap exactly right onto that intersection. OK, so I'm going to left click. Left click. Left click, left click, 
and I'm going to complete my curve. You see, when I get close enough to my initial point, a little zero or circle appears to the lower right of my pen tool, and that means I'm close enough to the anchor point or the point that started this whole vector curve. So if I click now, it will complete this curve. Yes, yeah, so I want to do that. All right, so I come down here to my, with that selected, I come down here to my lower left uh, uh, swatches or, or menu bar, and I make sure that the fill swatch color is in front. And let's pick a color from, um, let's get rid of it. I hate that one. Uh, uh, let's pick like a, a light green. Okay, there you go. Now, what I want to do is this. I want to fill the other side. So let's do, let's repeat the operation. Click on the pen tool. Let's fill this area. And complete it. And let's make this a darker color. <clears throat> yeah, OK. All right, so. OK, so those colors aren't quite right, so let's click on the left hand side and say let's use a light pink and then over here I want something that gives us the idea of a shadow. There we go. All right, so you can see that right now if this was a building on a city street, and we were standing directly opposite so that our eyes were aligned with the center point here. We would see this building in this manner. OK, we would see uh, the bottom corner of it below our field of view and the top corner of the roof above our point of view. Now you could go on and you could create building after building after building and make a city street so that along all of these lines and new lines that you've added so that everything. Via perspective looks like it goes with each other and, and and looks as if it does when we actually view a, a street scene ourselves. OK, so what I want to do now is show you something. Much further than this basic concept, this is the basic concept that uh, you can start with by and uh, construct a uh, a cityscape, for instance, in perfect perspective in an Adobe Illustrator um, format or interface so that everything looks as if it actually looks when you're standing on a street. And you can add infinite detail to this. So if you wanted to, um, uh, if you wanted to have another street, for instance, on this uh, lower spot down here, you could Again, create another guideline by hitting C and V. Moving that guideline over to the vanishing point, making sure that the center point aligns with our vanishing point, hitting the rotate tool and rotating down. Now you see this could be a street that separates two, two city, uh, to the sides of uh, this could be a street where there are buildings on one side and buildings on the other side and through the addition of more and more guidelines and trying to keep track of where everything is and what you're doing you can create something in perfect two point perspective now let me show you something i created earlier now this is something that is a complete extrapolation or or takes what i've just shown you to a completely different level Whereas in the center of the original illustration that I just showed you, our view was dead on straight in the middle of this building so that the top of uh, the rooftop and the, the bottom of the building were both uh, either below or above our line of sight. You can see that using these vanishing points, we can create objects in perfect perspective. Whereas we can see the tops of them and you can see I've used a lighter color here, et cetera, and, and drawn these these panels exactly in the same way that I just did. Or if there was some sort of building floating in the sky, for instance. It could be in complete harmony with what was on our street down here by maintaining those same right and left vanishing points. So you see how all this works? Yeah. With the combination of vertical lines and lines that that begin and uh, vanish 
on two different points, one to the left and to the right. You can use this as a way to create any object so that it's in perfect perspective or relationship with other objects in the same scene. Get it? OK, it's hard. There's a lot of blue lines there. It can be quite confusing, but this is a valuable concept that you want to get your um, that you want to try and understand because it will help to see you through just about any kind of visual design, uh, realistic visual design thing you might want to approach in the future. It's perfect for doing things in a sketchbook. You can just draw these with with uh, light pencil lines, etc. And I highly recommend that you try and understand how this works and incorporate it into your design work. Now that's all for today and uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, uh, talk to you next time.